Hi there, it's Karen Lebo with VintageDazzle.etsy.com here to show you a flea market haul. It has been, oh, I don't know, at least four months since I've done a flea market haul. I was so excited. Um, but I do have to say it was a bit crowded. It was a little scary, but everybody was wearing masks and everybody was trying their best to do social distancing. Sometimes it was a little difficult, but... Um, but I do feel like people were trying to be safe. And uh, every single space was supposed to have hand sanitizer available. Not all of them did, but many did. So every time I would look at something and touch something, I would immediately sanitize my hands. So hopefully that was protecting me and protecting other people who came after me. But anyway, um, I have a modest haul here to show you. Spent. I know it was over $200, because I bought more than $200 worth of jewelry. Uh, but anyway, I have some really interesting, fun things to show you, so let me just get started. And as usual, I will start with the jewelry. Um, there's one, one place that I spent um, $105 total on the jewelry, and so I'll just show you what all I got from that person. It's not really completely broken down. Um, these are some, well, they used to call them beggar beads, but I think that that's not a very nice name, so, uh, but they're natural stone, mostly quartz and agate, um, beads from India, and they're hand knotted, and probably from the 1960s, nice old barrel clasp on these. And then, uh, this is a lovely set of Poisoné beads. Let's see if I can show them. They're a really interesting, kind of a mauve color with little flowers on them. And again, these are pretty old. They're hand knotted, and um, they have a spring ring clasp. They're on, you know, some kind of cotton twine. And then this is a, a Native American piece, bear claw shadow box with the turquoise, and uh, this is a scarf slide. <laughs> I just had to get this. So exuberant. This is an enamel on copper, little artisan made piece, um, probably 1960s, when these were very popular. It was sort of a, a home craft that a lot of people could, you could buy kits and do them at home. But I think, you know, some artisans made them also. Okay, we have this Moon Glow bracelet in beautiful orange and gold leaf shapes. And uh, this is marked Coro. And it's an older one, pre-1955. It is a little bit worn, but I think once I clean it and I'm going to touch it up with my leafing pen, I think it'll look pretty spectacular. Nice big chunky one. I really like the way this one looks. And we have this uh, gold-filled bangle bracelet. It's a hinged... Hinged? Maybe it's not hinged. Oh, it is. It just, um, it opens, but it doesn't, it's not really hinged, but you can open it a little bit wider to get your hand through. And uh, this is uh, gold filled, I think I already said that, and the, the mark on it is um, Winard, I think is what it says. Yeah, Winard. I know I've heard that name before. I think that's a, an early 20th century maker. And, let's see, we have a cyan silver brooch. It's a, a more unusual color. Most of them are black. They do come in other colors. I like that one. Green. And, sterling silver and rhinestone bow brooch. This one uh, is Castle Cliff. 
which is a good maker. It's probably 1940s, I'd say. I'll, um, I'll take some of that tarnish off. I, I have to. I know I'm not supposed to, but I can't help myself. That little... I can't tell whether that's meant to be bent like that or not. I think maybe it's meant to be tipped up like that. And we have some Mexican silver. Nice chip inlay brooch. And uh, this one is signed on Ansel. Uh, I'm pretty sure I recognize that maker, and it's an Eagle Mark III, which is Tosco. But it's uh, tricolor metal, silver, brass, and copper, along with the chip turquoise. It's a nice piece. And have a little abalone butterfly pin. These are always popular. This one is uh, pretty extravagantly marked. It, I looked this up and I it um, looks to be an Eagle Mark 12 and I could not find who that belongs to. Um, and the maker mark is pretty, you know, the top line where the maker is got cut off. Um, but I'll hunt around. I may still be able to figure out who that is. Probably not, but maybe. And then the last thing from this lot is an absolutely gorgeous pair of Zuni needlepoint coral earrings. Uh, I think all the stones are there. It's nice dark orange coral, and they are signed. Um, A A H, I believe. So yeah, those are winners. Those are nice. Okay, so I, uh, I felt like that was a pretty good deal. This is a less good deal, but this is my buddy Alex, who just, he has very nice things, but he charges very high price. They're not high prices for the flea market, like just for retail, but they're high for me. But uh, sometimes I just have to, because it's really pretty stuff. Uh, so I paid 110 for this lot, much smaller lot, but take a gander at this. This is a Victorian engraved sterling silver locket, and it's just gorgeous. Uh, it does. It has I think that's plastic. Probably added later, though. I'm pretty sure this is genuinely old. It just looks it. But anyway, it's it's quite nice. And we have a Navajo mother of pearl ring. It's a good chunky, chunky heavy one. And it is not marked. This ring. This appears to be Native American, but I, but it's uh, the stone is faceted. I don't really know. I think probably it is, but I don't really know. And this is an interesting stone. I don't know what it is. It's green. I'm always mystified by green stones. Kind of a crystally looking. And it says 95. And I don't think there's any signature on it, but again, it's a nice, big, chunky, heavy ring. Beautiful. And then we have this ring, which has a brown stone. I haven't really done any research on that stone, but it's really pretty. You know, I'm guessing it's some kind of agate. Maybe it's petrified wood. It has some kind of wood grain look to it. I don't know. It's awfully slick, but petrified wood. Um, this is signed SJ95. I haven't really done any research, but again, nice, chunky, really smooth. I love a ring that's really satiny smooth on the inside. I just feel like it's been, you know, somebody took some time to really make it well. And... 
earrings. I, I thought these were kind of interesting because I'm reasonably sure, I haven't tested them, but I'm reasonably sure these are amber and sterling silver, but they're faceted. You just never see amber faceted. So, or at least I, I haven't seen a lot of it anyway. And, uh, there are inclusions and uh, these are marked 925, and I think that's it. Yeah. So, they look, you know, vaguely southwestern. And the last item from this lot is a pair of earrings. Again, we have some mystery stones. Oops. I don't know. I don't know what these stones are. Oops. Not doing a very good job showing them, am I? They're kind of a dark pink, pinky orange, clear, uh, translucent. do some work on these to figure out what they are. Uh, these are signed <clears throat> A-N-G. They look Native American. And that is it for the jewelry. I just bought those two lots. That's the only jewelry I saw that I wanted to buy. So, now this, um, I thought this was all hand painted when I bought it, but as I'm looking closer, I realize some of it is transfer wear, so I think it has some transfer wear, like see this border around the bottom and this one around the top, these kind of viney looking things are transfer printed, and then I think parts of the flower are, but then there's also many hand painted parts of it. Um, this is probably from China, but it's not marked, which means, is it marked? not marked. Um, you know, it could be kind of old. I don't really know. But I thought it was very pretty. And uh, this is a lady that I buy a lot of things from. Her prices are usually fairly high, so usually I only buy something if I just fall in love with it. Uh, but she was in a real selling mood. She had, she told me she had sold her van, which she had been literally using for storage. And she had all this stuff she just needed to get rid of. So she sold me that vase for $2, and then she picked up every other single thing that I had been looking at and wrapped it all up and gave it to me for free. <laughs> so some of it, I wasn't really sure if I wanted it or not, but I took it. So, um, but this, I absolutely love this. This is a little hand-painted little pot with a lid, and it's from France. So I'm not really sure what this is for. Kind of small to be like a marmalade jar. Uh, it's too short for toothpicks. It's too short for Q-tips or anything like that. But it's just adorable. And she also gave me these little, these are um, transfer printed. Uh, also, I think these might be partly hand painted. Um, this is Victoria, China, Czechoslovakia. Um, this is going to be post World War One, and I have three of those. They're like little chocolate cups, I guess, or demi tasse cups. Uh, they're all the same. They all have the same scene on them, and then these two little egg cups. This one I particularly like. It's got a little ducky on it and some flowers and some mushrooms. And then this one has a chicken. And this one is marked, it's either 66 or 99. Oh, and this one is marked um, foreign. Uh, Foreign is what some countries marked their exports for the U.S. Rather than putting the country of origin, they just put foreign on it. So who knows where it's from? Germany, France. Who knows? 
Okay, so that is it for my uh, my free free things. That was just really sweet of her to do that. She's um, she's a really fun lady. She and her son come to the flea market, and they're always there. And she's 83 years old. I just I think she's amazing. She does not look 83 years old. Uh, okay, so then we have this little basket, which. Uh, it was sitting with a whole bunch of stuff from Mexico, but the lady who sold it to me said she did not think it was, ooh, that's got dead bugs in it. Ooh. Um, she did not think that it was from Mexico, but she really wasn't sure. It doesn't smell like sweet grass exactly. Uh, if anybody recognizes what this could be, you know, I was hoping it might be Native American or Asian, could be African, could be so I gotta do some research on this, but I thought it was cute. Five dollars on that. These are some dolls. They are from Kenya, I believe. Um, oh, they're just so cute. Um, I've only done a little bit of research on these dolls. Um, the original ones were made for tribal use. Uh, a father would carve one for his daughter. Actually, it's more like this kind. She would be, um, see, she's got a little baby on her back. <laughs> um, but a father would carve this for her daughter and she would keep it until she had her first baby and then she would pass it along to uh, probably a younger sister or maybe a cousin if she didn't have a sister, so that they would stay in the family for quite some time. Now supposedly, the way you tell if it's an older one is if the hair is hemp, uh, then it's for the tourist trade, but if it's real hair, which they would use the, the daughter's own clothing and jewelry and hair to make the doll. And I'm not sure. It does look pretty old. Um, the, the, the genuine ones that are used for, you know, that were actually used for the purpose intended, uh, those can go for a few hundred dollars, especially ones this big. These are nice big ones. I love this one. Isn't he cute? But these are, you know, some kind of hide. And the, uh, the name of the tribe is escaping me right now, but there is a certain tribe in Kenya that makes these. Okay, so um, anyway, I got I paid fifteen dollars a piece for those. Have a little toll tray, a little tiny one, and I paid I think two dollars for that. This is a Murano cane glass paperweight. It is um, KB, an original creation by KB, made in Italy. And I paid um, eight, yeah, eight dollars for this. It was, this was in a, a booth where everything was half price. This was marked 18, so she was charging nine, but she did not have any change, and I only had eight dollars in change, so she took it. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. Uh, let's see. And I got some choppers. It's been a while since I bought any of these nice primitives, um, but I just couldn't walk away from these because it was all three for five dollars. <laughs> They're really neat. I don't think any of them are marked or anything, but I just like the way they look. Now this is a Victorian paper mache basket with a brass handle. It's a little bit shabby, shall we say. It has a couple of chips, but no, you know, 
terrible damage. I think that those chips could pretty easily be repaired because they're not really affecting the design much. But anyway, let's see if you can maybe see that. This is very dirty. It's just covered in dust. I haven't cleaned it or done anything to it. Um, but that I paid ten dollars, eight or ten. This was my favorite book as a child. Mumsy Goes to Kindergarten. Are you not surprised? Because it has a cat. Uh, I think I have actually bought this book before. I'll wait for the siren to go by. Okay. Uh, but I don't know what I did with it. <laughs> so I bought it again. <laughs> Anytime I see the children's books, I'm always looking were the, uh, the ones that I remember as a child, but this was my absolute favorite. The copyright is 1945. Um, I don't know whether this was bought especially for me or if it had belonged to my older sisters. I tend to think it might be the latter. But um, anyway, it was $3. I just overpaid for it because it's not in great shape, and I'm probably not going to sell it. I'm probably just going to lose it again lose it, have to buy it again. Uh, it's a nice little dance purse. Oops, there's the front of it with the Guilloche enamel rose. It's silver plated. Uh, it is not in the greatest of shape. It, as you can see, the silver plating is worn off where it's been touched. Um, oops. You open it, it's got a mirror on this side. And then this, uh, this opens up. Well, it does open up. Okay. Uh, it, uh, there's a compartment, maybe for your your uh, fold folding money. And um, this probably had some kind of a coin holder in it, or something like that. I'm not a hundred percent sure what all it had in it. It's kind of got this frame part around it, so uh, I'm not really sure. <laughs> but um, this would have been 19 teens, 1920s. Um, and it does have a, a brand. It's, um, I did see a brand, FM Co. And I know I've seen that before. I can't remember what it is offhand. But it's got the nice uh, embossing on the sides. And that was $15. Embossed brass box. This was probably uh, like a craft home craft made. I'm um, thinking about the 1930s because of that green felt. That green is just so 1930s. It's got the felt on the bottom too. It's got some little uh, the hinges are brass. But I thought it was particularly nice. I love the patina on it. Just have to clean a little bit of the dirt off and it'll be fine. I can't remember what I paid for this, but I think I paid a lot. Like, I couldn't, it's one of those things that I couldn't walk away from. Um, $10 maybe. This I know I also paid too much for, but um, Victorian pencil box. What I like about this one is it's a double double-decker one. Oops. It has a second layer. Oh, sorry, it opens this way. Uh, it has a little decal right there and some chip carving along the edge. It is missing a little piece right there. So, not the greatest condition, and it's pretty dirty, but um, <laughs> I paid $10 for that. 
<laughs> Sometimes I amaze myself. And then I believe this is the last piece. This is a little Art Nouveau pen dish. It is made of pewter, I believe. And I'm not 100% sure it's old. I think there's a good chance this came from the 1970s, only because I found a couple of others really similar to it online. But that's, you know, not necessarily uh, proof that it's not old. I didn't find, you know, dozens of them. I just found a couple. So. But anyway, I just thought she was awful pretty. She was $5. I uh, believe that is it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't, where I have these uh, haul videos. Hopefully it's going to be more regular now that flea markets are opening up, although there's another one this weekend and I just don't know if I'm going or not because this first one really unnerved me. <laughs> I wanted to come home and like take three showers and uh, I don't know. But um, anyway, it is fun to be able to buy stuff again. Uh, I also do weekly vlogs where I just I show you what I'm listing, what I'm selling, what I'm going through as a reseller, and also sometimes what I'm eating, where I'm walking, what my cat's doing, all that kind of stuff. So, um, thanks again, and I'll see you soon. Bye!